So, welcome to Tabletop Gaming Guild. Tabletop Gaming Guild is all about the experiences that playing games with friends and families can create. Or enemies, you know, because me and Nathan are enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can only backstab each other so many times before we become enemies. Absolutely. James is a whole separate realm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's everyone's nemesis constantly. <laughs> But we don't let him know that. Yeah, I think we let him know it too much. We probably do. <laughs> yeah, we gotta tone it down. He enjoys it too much, you're right. Uh, but anyways, today we'll be playing Raiders of the North Sea. Now, we both know how to play it, so rather than doing a whole upfront tutorial, I'll just kind of tell you what I'm doing as we go. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting game. I've played through it once now. And I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy the art. It is in my collection. It's also in James's collection. Did they change anything from what you can tell? No, it's all the same. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this art, for sure. I like this style. Yeah, even yeah, the iconography is all the same. The iconography can take a little getting used to. Obviously, in the actual physical game, the cards just have the text directly on it. You don't have to highlight over the cards. It's not full image. Okay. It's one minor complaint. It takes a little getting used to scrolling over each card to uh, get it to highlight it. You know, it's a little extra half a second that you think it's not working. Right. I'm going to be discarding two of them and keeping three for my starting hand. And I think I've made my decisions for that. I just need to decide where to put my little Viking dude. So he's going to have to place it at a location he wants to activate worker placement but the, what makes it unique is that he then has to pick up one that's already down and he gets that action as well and it, we start with three on the board and you'll have one in your hand you never have more than one in your hand all right so i'm going to go ahead and place at the silversmith and gain three silver all right i'm going to pick up from the gatehouse and get two more cards okay so I have to pick which cards I want to discard uh, generally you know the cheaper ones are good to keep early on this grave digger is interesting revealing a little information about what's in my hand to Peter again I always like games where cards have multiple uses and so as we look at each of these cards we see that uh, they bring a certain ability if we hire them onto our crew, or if we go to the town hall, we can use them for a separate ability, which is pretty interesting as well. So if you're looking at my screen, the top function is if you hire them into your crew. The little play arrow uh, triangle is if you just play it for the instant ability, in which case you don't have to spend the money that's on the top left. And in the top left on the red, in the red area is their strength they bring to you if they're in their crew. So obviously, you know, the zero power ones, you're only adding them to your crew for their abilities. So I think the thing about the game that took me a little while to get used to through my first playthrough and through the tutorial is realizing that there's, there's three different color Viking meeples that you will be using there's black gray and white and uh there's different areas that those meeples can interact with so looking at the basic options for meeple placement down here there are two that require you to either use a gray or a white meeple the armory and the longhouse so in the very beginning of the game you, those two places are not open to the players until you start going out and actually attacking places because once you attack those places part of the uh, the things that you will get are more meeples and there's the gray ones and the white ones so it took me a little while to, to realize what they do and how they function differently mm -hmm. and you just can't go straight out and attack because you need certain resources you need a certain number of people in your crew and you need provisions exactly money's obviously important but I could I have a workaround for that. Unfortunately, I can't do the two actions I was preferring to do, which is mill and barracks, because I have to pick up one that's down. So I can only do one of those two actions. So I'm going to take place in barracks and hire oh, my grave digger. He's hiring his crew members already. 
And I am instead going to go to Town Hall. And place this bra Grave Digger. My second Grave Digger oh, to swap. nice. The Cheapo Grave Digger. For this more expensive Shield Maiden. He's just throwing people all, all, all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. Yep. Very interesting. All right, that was an interesting turn to watch. Hmm. How shall I respond? I think I'm going to do something fairly similar, but in reverse order. Obviously, because now I can't pick up from Town Hall. So I'm going to go to Town Hall, and I'm going to utilize the playability... Um, of the recruiter which is going to allow me to hire one crew member immediately for only two silver so okay. then I will purchase of course somebody who's normally worth more, more than two silver and that is one of Nathan's favorite I think and that's the Avenger oh. um, and then the reverse portion of this is to pick up from the barracks and then I can hire somebody else and for that one I'm going to go ahead and bring out the marauder okay Already gearing up for uh, outposts. Yep, everybody's gearing up, gearing up. So, the one thing I normally would do on that one is uh, different. Is I like the recruiter to have in my crew mm -hmm. because he decreases the cost of hiring crew members from then on rather than just once off. I did see that. Yeah, but I mean. It's whether you want the quick advantage or long term, but then you also also have a cap of five members in your crew, so at some point you want to kill him. Right. Or rather, send him to Valhalla. So one of the things you should also notice, even in the basic functions, basic actions, some of them do prefer certain types of meeples. Where's Silversmith? It's better if you have the black ones, which are going to disappear as we go through the game, and you'll see why that happens. And so silver is going to be a little less prevalent later in the game, whereas the mill makes it easier to get provisions as we go on. I have no cards. Let's uh, see what my luck is for cards. Okay, interesting. And then let's start gathering provisions. Because I can't do anything without any provisions. Nope, you gotta have them. Oh, yeah. Okay, so one of the important things when you start raiding is all these little skulls. Yes. Skulls uh, send out Valkyries to take your raiders off to Valhalla, which give you points, but then you lose that person in your crew. A raiding we must go. Is he gonna kill off his grave digger already? Nope, not He's yet. Take the, the uh, low cost ones first. That's right. I'm gonna pick up some iron, which uh, might get me some victory points at the end of the game if I still have any. I'm gonna pick up some gold, but I'm also gonna probably need those later to go and raid some of these monasteries and or fortresses, so. Do you find it early on probably better to raid the places that are giving you livestock to like trade that in in the longhouse, or do you prefer the places that give you the gold and the iron? What's what's your preference? So I haven't played it enough to see if there's a better strategy, what the best optimal is, but I mean, livestock is good but it depends on your starting hand if there is one character that will help you pr get more provisions earlier in the mill mm -hmm. which pretty much inv validates uh, going to the uh, longhouse for cattle using cattle to turn to provisions and we're going to won't go into detail about how that happens 
And the points for going to the longhouse aren't like phenomenal for how much you're trading in. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely a, an end game thing where you're just trying to get last minute victory points. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to do a little bit here and there. But you don't want to focus on it because you can get so much more from if you can like gear up and get to these fortresses. Yeah. But then again, if you're trading in on a regular basis, you can build it up. Yeah, gold is important because later on it costs gold to go to these places. You have to pay your crew if they uh, for extended journeys. So yeah, I would I generally focus on gold and the iron because iron lets you go to the armory and get better, strong, stronger, faster. You can use money at the armory, but that's kind of inefficient. Right. Uh, but anyways, it's my turn, isn't it? It is. Yep, it's your turn. What are you going to do next? Are you going to keep hiring some more crew? No, I'm just going to kill my gravedigger. Oh, he's going to kill another gravedigger. Oh, wait. I don't have the provisions yet. Ah, I gave away my, uh, okay. my strategy. I like how Nathan doesn't just, like, fire people from his crew. No, he kills them. They're they're dead. He's like, no, no, I'm killing the gravedigger. I kill you till you die from it. <laughs> All right. Okay, he went to armory. See, he was just asking so he would uh, steal my strategy, wasn't he? <laughs> That's all it was. No, I was going to I was going to do something different, but um you made it you made it unable for me to do uh, so. Okay, I like this guy. I was going to say, so something else I didn't realize uh, until, because it wasn't in the tutorial, it wasn't mentioned, um, is that in the in the cards that you gain from the deck house, or the gatehouse, every so often, you you will get a hero card in your hand, and you can only hire one hero. Correct. Okay. I'm assuming if you kill off your hero, uh, you, you can get another one. I'm assuming but... you can get another one, then, if you, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bye bye to my worthless grave digger. Bye bye grave digger. He dug his own grave. He wouldn't let anyone else do it for him. Mm-hmm. He's no no. He's like no no. This is my shovel. I shall dig my own grave. You gotta have pride in what you do. Absolutely. But now that I have grave, uh, gray worker, I can uh, get some more provisions quicker. Right. Just gotta hire more crew. Don't tell the others that they're cannon fodder. <laughs> I didn't get as many cheap cards as I want. I usually like early game, but I can work with what I got. All right, I think I'm gonna go here, get some more cards. And I'll go here. Okay, he didn't give me a whole lot of options. Do I have anything that's great for it? I'm really kind of, my cards do kind of stack for one option. Although I, I don't care for this one particular, I don't care for the trader. No. Uh, she just lets you uh, get more points out of the longhouse, but early game, you're generally not going to the longhouse a whole lot. Yeah, I guess he didn't give me a whole lot of great options for what I have in my. I'm I'm okay with that. So I will get my provisions and get more cards, I guess. Even more expensive cards. <laughs> well, there's that. There is that. <laughs> I don't like that laugh. Oh. I don't, I don't like that laugh at all. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's too late. It's too late. I'm already worried about it. So what's Peter doing? He doesn't have provisions to raid. Well, technically he has three guys, so he could raid. I do have I do have three guys. I could raid this last uh, one of these two harbors here in the middle and gain either a bunch of livestock or a livestock and an iron, but then I would have to lose somebody. But the gravedigger would give me another gold if I did that. So the question is, is do I want to go ahead and get rid of this grave digger. But I'm going to need more provisions soon. Oh, wow. I was just looking up ahead. The monasteries are full of uh, Valkyries. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, 
So is that like what's how does it randomize what is at each location? Do we know? It is. It's fully random. Well, each spot will say put three or four in it, and then you draw from a in the physical game you're drawing from a velvet bag. Oh, okay. All right, well, I'm, well, I went cattle raiding on that one. Yep. Need to send the lawman after that cattle rustler. Unfortunately, my my hand of cards is kind of giving, leading me towards one strategy, which the board state is kind of trying to lead me away from that strategy. Oh, no. <laughs> which isn't great, but uh, well, you, I should have looked at what you have first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's nice that you can click on each other's ship. And then undo actions. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah. That would have been pretty useless if I'd done that. Good thing I didn't do that. I'll steal your uh, gray guy for uh, some extra provisions. There you go. Solid plan. See what he does and I'll dictate what I do next. So I think I'm going to go here and get two provisions trading in one of my cattle that I just stole. Okay. Uh, and then I'm actually going to go to the town hall. Okay. And, and I'm going to use my warmonger to steal one of your provisions. Ha! I am going to the... Oh. Oh. Did that change what I need to do? I don't know, did it? Did it? Oh. Did I ruin your plan? Uh, you changed my plan. Okay, didn't ruin it, just changed it. I'll do this instead. Oh, he's going raiding, people. Which one's he taking? Oh yeah, the gold and the iron and the cattle. Yeah, that's a nice spot. It is, it is. So what's Peter doing now? Hmm, that is a really good question. Because to be totally honest, I, that is exactly where I was going to go this turn. Yeah. So, I gotta figure out another strategy. Yeah, I had two ways of stopping you from going there, though. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to go to the silversmith. And Ooh. once again, visit the longhouse trading in another cow for some more provisions. Oh, well, you got a lot of provisions going. I do. Does that change my plan yet again? It's just interesting. I was I did, was wondering how much playing a two-player game would impede each other's movements, and it still does a fairly good job of doing that. Of like you're like I know what I want to do and then even though I'm only playing one other person, you you've made it difficult for me to decide what to do. It almost seems a little more so than right. Because when I played when I played uh, the full game earlier, I played against three AI at a full four person game. Oh no! <laughs> you took one of my provisions again. I thought you just stop what you were saying as soon as I did that. Oh man! I was like, what is this on my screen? And I see how it is. I see how it is. All right, but I do have three. I do have three people here. And I do have a gray meeple. Uh, let's see here. I think I really... I want to go to the barracks, though, before I go raiding again. I think I need to get some more cards. And I need to go to the barracks. And I shall hire an archer. Hmm. My strength is five. Peter's at strength 12. Wow. That I am. I've, I've got a four-person crew. I'm almost at my limit. And that's the other thing to remember. You can only ever have eight of any particular item in your hand. So that's eight cards or eight, eight cattle, eight iron. I don't think you can have any more than eight of any one thing while playing. Mm-hmm. Wow. The game really wants me to do one particular strategy. <laughs> and you must give in. Alright, I think I need to do this. Get some silver. 
go to the town hall. Trade in two silver for a gold. Oh, okay, interesting turn. What do you have now? Meh. Meh. You heard that everybody said meh. <laughs> okay, I need to get provisions. And I'll take some silver. So, yeah, this is kind of a slow build. I've definitely seen people, like, race off, but we're definitely both focusing on building up our strength to, like, really get the most possible points out of these places. We really are. All right, let's see. What's Peter strength at right now? Uh, I'm at 12. I am at 12. I'm still 12, so I'm catching up on strength. All right, I'm going up for my first outpost. That's right, 15, so I have four more victory points for me. Nice. Oh, that's a lot of gold in there. It is, it is. You've got a lot of gold, though, too. Oh, you mean the one up there? It's got three gold and a white meeple up there? I know, right? Yep. I thought about it. I almost went for it. Of course, with the, just a black meeple, I cannot go there. So that requires you to have gray. It so does, it does. <laughs> oh, he hired another. Oh my gosh, he's got three of them in there, everybody. Three! He's ready, he's geared up for those monasteries. Mm-hmm. Geared up. All right, so we're going to hit the longhouse. We're going to trade in a couple more cattle here for some more provisions. I'm going to pick up a gray meeple from the mill, get two more provisions. Okay. That kind of forces me into doing this. Yeah, it does. Because I need a gray meeple. You do, you do. So I'm going here, playing this person. <sighs> Who's he hiring now, everybody? Oh, my gosh! <laughs> You weren't kidding. They really are forcing your hand in this one. I'll go here and get points for cattle. And uh... okay. All right, that is that is a full crew of almost solely shield maidens. And even the one that's not a shield maiden helps me with monasteries. That is hilarious. So each of the shield maidens gets me an extra point for each monastery I attack. Well, I'm gonna head up here and get me some more gold. And four more victory points. Now that puts me at my... Now, I'm assuming gold is also limited to eight. Like everything else. I am not 100% sure, but I assume so. I assume so. Yeah, these monasteries aren't, like, massively great. No, but these outposts have been really nice. Yeah, the goods that came out are not optimal. Right. I get to roll two dice... So, and the dice are not standard dice. Uh, they are actually D6s, but only go from two to five. So you actually have two threes and two fours on each die. Okay, so on average, you're going to get six or seven added to your strength. So, just there. The goods aren't great, but the points certainly are. Points are great. Yeah, absolutely. And all those bonuses. Which one are you going for there? Going oh. for the last? That's no good. Who do I want to? So who's? Kill? I was gonna say who's gonna die? Are you gonna keep all the shield maidens, or are you gonna lose the one dude, the one scout guy? Yeah, I lose the guy that makes it cheaper. Unfortunately. All right, that's good. That that just opens it up a little bit more for another shield maiden in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's definitely more direct interaction. There may be three or four people that affect you. They don't know what you're planning as clearly as a two player. Yes, absolutely, totally agree with that. That works out. Well, I apparently did not do the right thing then if it worked out for Nathan, so. So I'll go here. Uh, let's do that. Oh no, don't do that. <sighs> Fine. 
taking my money. I needed that money. Up my armor. So my strength is now at 14. Oh wow, we're both at the same strength now then. Alright, yeah. I need some more cards. That's what I need. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's. I need some cards that aren't garbage. Yeah, yeah, I finally got my cards that aren't garbage and you took my money so I can't spend it. <laughs> oh man, I need more money. I definitely need that. I think I'm actually gonna take the treasure, dump a card, so that I can get some silver back. Since it was taken from me so rudely by Nathan. Essentially, it cost you half a turn. Not a huge thing. No, but it's still frustrating. I just have to find another way to get at you. I'll figure it out. Oh, get yeah, getting the provisions. Gotta have those. Get some cards. Ooh, I like that one. Gotta have those. That's expensive, but it's nice. Oh, okay. Ooh, later that'll be great. I also need provisions. That actually works out well with the uh, issue I'm facing. Up here. No, these. Just have to kill him, and that's not a huge thing. It just costs a lot of money. So do we know, um, like, the hero cards? Do we know all the heroes that are out there? Do you have any idea? I only know a couple of them. Do they have names, or are they, like, still titles? I can't remember. I think they might have names. I haven't seen one this game, obviously. And apparently you haven't either. Alright, well, I'm gonna go to Silverman Smith, get me some more money. Ooh, he must have got something expensive. Is he getting higher now, I'm guessing? I probably should. I, I really want the provisions, though, too. That's my dilemma right now, because I have zero provisions. I thought the dilemma was the color of the meat. Because black can really only be used in the harbor. Well, I mean, that's partly, but it's more I, I need provisions. That's okay, though. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the black one. That's all right. Uh, and I am going to hire somebody. I'm going to hire the barbarian. Okay. That's the other interesting thing about like the two-player game. They don't really restrict the places, so it's like in a four-player game, it's like there would be no black meeples left at this point because all the harbors would have been used. And... Right. Okay, let's hire a crew member. Oh, he's got the berserker. Yeah, something I can kill without worrying about. my provisions so if you go to hire a sixth person you have to just kick somebody from your crew right if it's not how it works if you try to do the barracks it'll get, still gives you the undo option yeah that's right it'd be certainly interesting if we get all the way to the outpost and we still haven't cleared the harbors I know right I mean harbors yeah. are generally not worth a whole lot of points They're just good Please get goods. Right. Yeah, get goods and get those gray meeples. I mean, that's what you need. So, I'm not a fan of this, but I'm still going to do it. Okay. Uh, so he's got cool with, cool with five, but he was talking about maybe doing a sixth. Oh. Okay, interesting. Didn't like what was there. Six is nice, but gold is so valuable. Always oh, going up. Going up a raiding. Actually, what is my strength? I should look first, but it should be pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should be fine. Oh, yeah, look at you go. I didn't roll as terribly as last time. That double two last time was not good. And the nice thing about the Berserker, he goes right back in my hand. It's expensive to hire again, but... But... I don't have to use the extra actions to draw more cards. Right. It's also four strength, which is great. Let's see 
if Peter messes me up. Okay, so we're just gonna pull up. Hiring. Okay, so I'll let you ditch guy. Okay, that's some end game points if you don't kill him off. So I've butchered the last of my herd. Nathan's got a nice little nice little lead with his eight victory points over me right now. Oh, he's hired him back. He's got him back. Yeah. Except for I pretty much have to pick up another black one so I can't go back out right away. Well, that's just fine because I think it's my turn to go raiding at this point. Here we go, going for a fortress. Wow. All right, eight victory points. Tied up. Okay. So basically, I need to do this. So I'll go here, get the three money, pick up at the armory, get the two money to strength. Just because I needed to pick up a white guy. Yep. Gotcha. Makes sense. Again, yet again, I am low on my provisions, but I can I can handle that. I'll go here, get a couple more provisions that way, and I'll go ahead and pick up here and get another provision there. Here. easily get all my bonus at this point. Like, I don't even need to roll the dice, it's just straight up. Man, you needed that in the fortress is where you needed that. Yeah. Kill the berserker again. Get ready to hire. The other nice thing about killing people, if you see on the score track, like, for every person you send to Valhalla, you get potentially some more points. Mm, mm -hmm. So, right now I have four points for sending people to Valhalla and two for increasing my armor. Yeah, nothing he for Valhalla. Nothing for Valhalla. Because he has been too, he's been too kind to his crew. He's not been killing them off. I have not. I've been, I've been a very benevolent leader so far. And he's just giving them extra armor. Like they need that. I mean. Seriously, right? Who needs that? Who needs all the armor? They're not called... <laughs> I was gonna say cannon fodder, but... <laughs> uh, right. They'd be just straight fodder. Mine are uh, just straight fodder. Alright. Actually, what's my strength? 17? That's a good point. Is it? Is it a good point? Yeah. He says, yes, yes it is. It's a very good point. I don't care too much about my... Uh, shield maidens anymore mm. oh man I got a card that you needed I got I got a card you needed so bad is it the one hero that gets stronger as you get more Valkyries yes yes it is oh, yeah that's right either way I still need provisions first that's right uh, which means I have to pick up a... I'll have to get this guy from the barracks I need to start getting to this outpost before Peter does. Although the monasteries are getting me a lot of points just because of all the shield maidens. Alright, here we go. Taking out another fortress. Yeah, what's he getting? 29. Got nine more points. Okay. You're still ahead, still ahead of me by three, though. Right, and like the monasteries are going to get me 10 points, but I need a gray or white worker to be able to go up there. Where do I want to go with this guy? What do I have in here? Oh, I can do that. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to go to Town Hall. Play this guy that lets me 
pretend I put my worker somewhere else. To take the silversmith action. Get some more money. And then I'm going to pick up at the mill. See, Peter says I'm three points ahead. But, that's not true. I'm only one point ahead of him. Yeah, how's that? Because you have that one character that gives you two points at the end of the game. It's true. It's like Nathan knows how to play this game. I just pay attention. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. I'm not really sure what I want to do right now. Yeah, he definitely geared up for outposts. He still has not... Never mind, I won't say that. <laughs> yeah, he has not done that. That the viewer can see, but I don't want to tell Peter about. <laughs> Is he trying to figure it out? No, I already know what it is. I'm just trying to decide if I want to do that now. Oh, you re you know what it is, huh? Oh, yeah. I can't do it right now, though. Uh, yeah, I can't do it right now because I've got a white meeple. Oh, I don't think you know what it is. What do you think it is? Well, now I don't know. Except I think I, except I still think I do. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, no, I don't want to do that. There's the, yeah, I, okay, that's what he thinks I mean, is this, that I'm pointing to for the viewers. What is not what I meant? <laughs> Which I could actually steal that from now that he's mentioned it. <laughs> oh no, I can't, I got a white maple. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go here, which is not exactly what I wanted to do. You know, that's actually an interesting point. Nobody can go there unless they go to the harbor. Is that why? All right. Okay. <laughs> Lord! Get that, get that meeple and kill two people. Berserk are gonna be one of them for sure. And I, I, oh, what, I don't know what the other one's going to be. No, uh-uh. It's going to be a really <laughs> tough choice. All right, but that really upped your victory points there for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's four extra each time. Right. Beautiful. I guess I'm going to go ahead. But I guess I'm going to go ahead and do this. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that's what I was referring to as the Avenger. Yeah, that's what I—that's what I thought you were referring to. Okay. See, I thought you thought I was referring to the outpost. Oh no. So that just means you have to choose which one of yours to take out? Yeah. And now I'm kind of getting short on crew. Yes, you are. Ah, <sighs> okay. I need a bunch. I need a lot of things. He needs so many things, people. So many. It's alright, so do I. Always hiring some crew. Gotta do that. Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> Alright, and what are you picking up? Picking up some cards. Picking up some Ooh, cards. Ooh, I like this guy. He's not strong, but his ability's nice. I'm gonna go over here, get some more provisions. I killed one more person, I'm at my max. <laughs> For Valkyries. Are you serious? Yeah. You're almost there. Yeah, yeah, the points actually grow as you go, I think. Yeah, the last one's five points. <laughs> I need. To, I think I have to do this. Yeah, what do you have to do? So I am gonna steal this gray guy, so Peter cannot go to his outpost. <sighs> a 
Of course. <laughs> of course. Ooh, I can make it even worse. <laughs> I could always go to the outpost myself. Absolutely. You could. The main thing is, how do I take the uh, gray worker out of the game? That costs three provisions, though, for four points. But I can't go up there with a gray guy worker. Okay. Well, that's fine. I easily will, uh, even with just three people, get the full points from that. This is uh, the equivalent of hate drafting. I was going to say, I'm really falling way behind here, I feel like, on the victory point track. Yeah, I mean, I could be nicer, but what's the fun in that? <laughs> no, yeah, what's the fun in that? That's not how you play. That's not the way this game is played. Why be nice? The important thing is never letting them have that gray. I could have went where the the other outpost location and picked up a white worker instead of another gray, but I would have lost one of my nice. Wait, what? Oh, he had a white worker. Yes, I did. And now I got ten more wow. victory points. So, yeah, that wasn't a great... Still behind. So it really did not delay. Still behind. So uh, what does he have left as far as... He still has provisions left. Plenty of gold. But not enough provisions to go anywhere. Not right yet. Oh, I do actually have enough provisions to go somewhere. Well, yes. Not to a harbor location. Oh, uh, but you can't go there with a white worker. That's true, I can't. Oh, man. I do have to make his gray worker available again. Oh, boy. Um, so I got it. Let's me re roll a die. I like him, he's fun. And get some more money. All these cattle, though. Going for another fortress. What? There was only one, there was one of them left that had only took two. Oh, I couldn't even see that one. Another ten victory points. Oof! Not evens good. up on evens up on sixty. Not but I do have good. to kill. Do have to send somebody to Valhalla. So I'm down to a four person crew. So he's got six three three points to my sixty. not looking at a huge amount of points for these fortresses. What's this? What's Peter's strength at? 20 and mine? No, 22 for his. I think I need to go... Gets that plus 2. Oh no, he's getting plus 4 because he got two of those guys. Wow. Yeah, I think I gotta go here. Uh, and then I gotta go here. Gotta start getting some more provisions again if I'm gonna go back out. Okay, so I need to also get provisions. Get them the fast way. Provisions, is that enough? Get some more. There's, oh, the game ends when there's only one fortress left. That we get one more round too. Right, we get one more. Yeah, we get one more round after that. Time to hire my hero. <laughs> well, that's not ideal, but I will do it. Oh, you still have to pick up. I still have to pick up. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what I need to do for that. The other raid again. 
got two provisions. Yeah, that hero is not... Okay, so, with that hero, he has a ridiculous strength, 27. But he doesn't have enough provisions. And neither do I, actually. Uh, <laughs> so that doesn't help. I'll get some provisions. And then I'll... Oh, but it's a white... Oh, no, that's not great. Oh. oh well. I am gonna do this. Play this lady. Oh, is this your hero? Is that a hero card? No. No, that wasn't a hero card, okay. I am just... Allows me to, uh... Spend one less resource at the longhouse, so I... Got three points for two silver. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So not a mm -hmm. huge thing, but... That was maybe dumb. Oh, man. It's just all about who can get up there. I feel like it's... it's. I feel like it's all about... Yeah, it's really tough right now. It's all about getting the right provisions. Or getting getting enough provisions to, to go out again right now for yep. me. Which I maybe... Oh, he doesn't have cattle left. No, I don't, sadly. In order to get provisions, you'd have to pick up a black. I would. You are absolutely correct. And that's not going to do me any good because I've already done that. Well, I guess I'm going to have to. All right, it's getting it's getting tense, everybody. It's getting tense over here. It's, it's a close, close game. Okay, he also has the provisions now. And the gold, which I do not. Oh, but I have the gold for this one. I'm gonna have to settle for this one, I think. All right, so we're gonna be down to our last turn. No, you got eight. You got eight victory points uh, can on it. We roll one of them. Not that it'll make too much difference. Nope, but you still got eight victory points. Now we each get one more. And I kill off the shield mate. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Last round. And lucky lucky for me then, I got that white meeple that I needed for this last round. So I'll head up and get the last fortress. And... Yes! 12 victory points! Nice! 73. Alright, and then I gotta kill off somebody. Um... The reality is 75. Oh! But he's killing off somebody, so that's gonna be... 75 plus... I cannot... It won't tell me what the bonus is. So he actually is at 76 in reality. I am at 76, and he doesn't have another turn. So it's, it starts, it's time to start adding up all the other things. Because <laughs> it's going to be really, really close. Armory will get me two points. I don't remember what's worth points other than actual just points. So you, so you, so you don't remember what else is worth points? I'm pretty sure there are some points for our resources, but... There are. I think the only resource that is not worth any money is the money. Or any worth victory points is the money. I, I don't think I can get more than just those two points. So if I'm adding it up correctly right now, I don't, I don't know if I should tell you this. I think I know how many points I'm ending up with at the end of the game. So money you said is not worth anything. Provisions is? Provisions are, but it's like... So if I remember correctly, cattle are worth one point per pair... Iron is worth a point. Gold is worth a point, and I'm not sure about provisions. Mm. Think I'm gonna win thanks to my to all my leftover stuff. Plus, I have the warlord who's two victory points. 
force you to lose an armor, but you're at that point where it doesn't matter. I can force you to lose a silver, which doesn't really matter. I can force you to lose that one provision, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. And again, I'm not sure if provision's, like, per pair or if it's just each provision is worth one. I don't think so, though. Wait a second. Wait a second. He might have figured something out. I have provisions. No, I can't go there with white. I have to have a gray. Oh, no. I can go here. I get my, uh... All right, so yeah, you're going to get the extra point from the armory. Yeah. And then... It's going to be really close. Uh, I'm thinking too hard <laughs> about this. No such thing. Yeah, I will just do this. And get two provisions. Whatever. Yep, 81 just by two <laughs> points. Two points. So you're right. So every two cattle is worth a point. Every three... Every iron and every gold is worth yep. one. And it doesn't look like provisions or silver are worth anything. So I did get a couple offerings, but you never got any. Yeah, I never did any of the offerings. Oh, that was such a close game, though. It was a really close game. Really well done. Okay, so everybody, that's uh, Raiders of the North Sea, which I really like. I wasn't sure if it would be a really great two-player game. Yeah, it definitely works well, too. Four, there's a lot less interaction, but yeah. there's a lot more restriction as far as, like, oh, t this place I'm trying to go is gone. Yeah, each decision is much more tense because there's not as many options. Yeah. But but I think I like the head-to-head -head a right. little bit more, actually. Yeah, the, the whole, you're directly stopping me from doing what I'm doing, want to do, and... I can kind of plan and try to stop you. Whereas yeah. in a four player game, that's not there so much. It is, but not as much because you got several other, you may have two people between me and you. Right, exactly. So I might not be able to affect you if you're too many, too many spots away from me. So, but then there's a lot more pressure to ramp up quicker and right. get to those later spots. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great game. We like it. So, of the Shem Phillips games, this is my favorite of his so far that I've played. I have not yet played Raiders of Scythia. I can't compare from the table to here because I've only ever played it digital so far. I love the art anyways. I like that they animate all of the art a little bit. There's a little bit of movement going on. Um, and I think they did a really fun intro when you first open the game each time. There's a little intro that you can watch, with which, which I think is kind of fun and gets you into the theme. Yeah. You know, with that... Any kind of game like this, iconography can be a little bit of an issue. This game handles it fairly well. I mean, that's a little, my very, very minor critique. I would have preferred a little bit less uh, latency between hovering and popping up on the text. But that's really a very, very fine thing. Which, like, if you have it too fast, then it's like popping up when you don't want it. So right. I, I can see where ha that's a really hard, fine decision. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, and, and, and I find this with a lot of digital board games, is um, does the tutorial really give you enough to fully understand the game? And for this one, I think it does a good job, but not as much as I would have liked. Um, it's still one of those, I finished the tutorial, and I was like, you know what, I really still have to watch a, uh, a how-to-play video on YouTube or read the or read the rule book. Because it, it goes into some detail, but not full detail at least not when i played through it so so i haven't played the tutorial because i already knew the game so but is it more assuming you kind of have the basics of the game already and it's just teaching teaching you the ai ui rather no i i felt like it was mostly teaching me the basics but it didn't go into even the valkyrie stuff it's probably just kind of skimmed over real quick and so when i went into my first playthrough i didn't remember that part well enough um, so it's, it's one of those, like, maybe it's all there, but maybe I should have, like, either slowed down through the tutorial or even played it a second time. Well, I think they may have put a little bit of that in the campaign. I don't know if you've tried the campaign yet. I didn't try the campaign yet. I just did tutorials one and two. So the campaign, actually, it only gives you the harbors, and it kind of teaches you a little bit how the harbors work. See, that's interesting. Since it didn't have the word tutorial in there, I wasn't sure what the campaign was. I, I guess I assumed it was just like a full-fledged game. That's good to know. I'll have to go back and play it so I can reevaluate my thoughts on the tutorials. 
Uh, the challenges are kind of interesting too. The more you play it, the more you like fulfill the challenge and you level up. There's no real rewards for leveling up that I've seen so far, but I'm assuming you can like when you're trying to look for people, you can see what level they are, see how much they played, and kind of judge whether you want to, you know, play against them or challenge them, and how hard, yeah. hard it's going to be. This is pretty high up there uh, for games that I've recently played. Really, really enjoy it. I like the digital implementation. And again, plays very well at two players, plays very well at four players. It's just a slightly different game when you have those different numbers. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed our playthrough of Raiders of the North Sea. Thank you for watching. Please join us again for more unboxings, reviews, previews, and playthrough. And we'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe.